different chair because I had back. Oh. And Let the record reflect. We reconvene with all members present. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I ask you to remain standing after the pledge. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing. A moment of silence to recognize a long time another one of our many special uh, residents, Carmela Vitali, and I got a chance to uh, last September to go visit her at the uh, Madison Mall apartments and present her with a proclamation recognizing her hundredth birthday. And uh, she died this past week, March fifteenth, at a hundred and a half, as she pointed out. And as it said in her obituary, an inspiration to many, Agnes Munsing, 106 months old in Madison, New Jersey, died on Thursday, March 15th. She's survived by her beloved son, Joseph, his wife, Laura. She was blessed with two grandchildren, four great-grandchildren, and one great-great-grandchild. And certainly was an inspiration to many, and it was an honor to have a chance to uh, meet her and it meant so much to her that the proclamation that it was actually mentioned in her obituary that uh, she received a proclamation. So, and she was also pictured in the ignorable issue of Madison Magazine, recognizing our um, 100-year-old residents. So a moment of silence and remembrance of Agnes Munsing. Thank you. Okay. You should be so lucky. Welcome all. Another March meeting, another snowstorm, and we survived, and here we are. A um, couple of things I want to share. Uh, one, um, today is a special day for me, and just a reminder what. Uh, as we see so many people here to support someone, what family means to so many. Today would have been my mother's 94th birthday. Um, lost her to cancer about 40 years ago. My sisters, um, only three of the six were able to make it into town, but they make it a, an annual trip to come and visit uh, her grave and main, main, take care of it and um, take a walk around her town and share great memories. And so it was a great honor to be able to walk around and the the current owner of 82 Prospect Street, where we grew up, allowed us to uh, tour the house, and um, our bedrooms have changed a little bit. It's <laughs> <laughs> so just wanted to share that great experience and remind everyone the importance of family. A few things, I know some of these we'll be hearing, hearing about shortly, but um, Taste of Madison, the, uh, I know um, Maureen will also talk about that, but it was a great event as always, as uh, near over 400 people enjoyed the tastes of our great restaurants, and it's 17 years and still going strong, so that's a great one. Um, it was a busy week last week, especially last Tuesday, the 20th. We had a visit from the uh, Druze delegation from Horfish, Israel. Druze is a uh, population in northern Israel. Uh, they left us this flag, um, including, this is part of the cultural exchange that is sponsored by the Jewish Federation of Greater Metro West New Jersey, and um, included in the delegation was Mayor Mofid uh, Mari, who um, we did a tour of Hartley Dodge and came in here and we uh, answered some questions and compared uh, our communities and it was a great exchange. and. We arranged just for the Mayor Mari to have uh, Governor Murphy in town across the street. So we then took him across the street to the train station, and just another day in the life in Madison where uh, Governor Mur Murphy was rolling out his commitment to New, Jer New Jersey Transit. So um, the mayor and the governor got to get a picture together, and it was great to hear uh, Governor Murphy's uh, commitment to uh, New Jersey Transit, which is so very important to our state and very important to life in Madison is quality of life. Um, as, as we learned two weeks ago, the portal bridge doesn't close right away. It can ruin, ruin a day and we need to reinvest. Also, uh, this past Saturday, we had our uh, March for Our Lives community send-off out on the uh, front here. 
And we had over 100 attend the uh, send off. And I want to thank committee members Deb Cohen, Alex Jennings, Jill Rhodes, Renee Shahab, uh, Rachel Barry, Tom Harren Potus, Christine Preston, Tom Hanahan, Bob Manjani, uh, uh, Madison High School senior Perry Munter, uh, Pastor Scott Foster of Madison Presbyterian Church, Pastor Craig Dunn of First Baptist Church, Drew Vice President for University Relations, Marty Weiner. Councilwoman Austria Bailey. Uh, this committee, in a less than two weeks, put together a very meaningful and impactful program that was presented here. Um, and I want to thank Madison Police under the leadership of our chief and uh, DPW for being ready Saturday to provide the security. Uh, part of the um, ceremony that we did on, this, on the steps out here, we had uh, Drew student Max Lazinski sang our national anthem. Speakers included Assemblyman John McKeon, who has taken the leadership role in uh, sensible gun regulations in the state, Deb Cohen as a teacher, Salma Mahmoud from uh, Drew University, government president, student government president. Uh, we had three very articulate junior school students, Jesse Rhodes, Penelope Jennings, and Claudia Steinstreicher, who all spoke. and. The uh, real star for um, the event was um, high school senior Perry Munter, who was every time at the meeting our committee met, she seemed to be volunteering to uh, take on a different role. She uh, spoke, also sang as part of the harmonium choir that was there, and gave the closing send off. And then <coughs> Pastor Scott Foster and Craig Dunn uh, also provided vocations. And, um, I'm very proud of our Madison students, those we heard in Morristown that made the trip to Morristown, and those across this country that have really picked up the ball, was dropped by many adults. And I'm going to come down here for a couple of proclamations. Barbara, come on up. Welcome to Madison and the council meeting. So this is a proclamation for Parkinson's Awareness Month. Whereas Parkinson's disease is a chronic progressive neurological disease that is the second most common neuro neurodegenerative, I gotta practice these multiple <laughs> syllable words. <laughs> neurodegenerative disease in the United States, and whereas it is, there, there is inadequate data on the incidence and prevalence of Parkinson's disease, but is estimated to affect nearly one million in the United States, and numbers expected to be more than double by 2040. Whereas Parkinson's disease is the 14th leading cause of death in the United States, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And whereas there are millions of Americans who are caregivers, family members, and friends greatly impacted by Parkinson's disease. Whereas it estimated that the annual economic burden of Parkinson's disease is over $26.4 billion per year, and indirect costs to patients and family members total $6.3 billion. And whereas research suggests that the cause of Parkinson's disease is a combination of genetic and environmental factors, but the exact cause of most individuals is still unknown. And whereas there's currently no objective test or biomarker to di diagnose Parkinson's disease, and whereas there is no known cure or drug to slow or halt the progression of the disease and available treatments, and are li limited in their ability to address patients' medical needs and any and remain effective over time, and whereas the symptoms of Parkinson's disease vary from person to person and can include tremors, slowness of movement and rigidity, gait and balance difficulty, speech and swallowing disturbances, cognitive impairment and dementia, mood disorders, and a variety of other non-motor symptoms. Whereas volunteers, researchers, caregivers, and medical professionals are working to improve the quality of life of persons living with Parkinson's disease and their families, and whereas increased research, education, and community support services are needed to find more effective treatments and to provide access to quality care for those living with the disease today. 
Now, therefore, I, Robert H. Conley, Mayor of Borough of Madison, on behalf of the governing body, hereby proclaim April 2018 as Parkinson's Awareness Month and urge all residents to become educated about this disease to create a better community and for individuals affected by Parkinson's disease. I appreciate all your work. My, uh, my brother-in-law has been suffering Parkinson's disease for quite a while, and uh, we just, you know, every day try to provide that support to make it better. It's a family disease. <laughs> On behalf of the uh, Parkinson's uh, support group that meets at the Madison Y, we meet on Tuesday, uh, the second Tuesday of each month, at 1 o'clock, and we serve both people with, uh, with Parkinson's as well as caregivers. And uh, we also live in an area that is very rich in resources available for people with Parkinson's and their families. There are exercise programs. There is also one at the, at the Madison Y. They meet uh, three times a week at 1.30, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. It's called Delay the Disease. And uh, one of the things that uh, research has shown is that exercise is extremely important for people with the disease to help slow down the symptoms since there really is no cure. And uh, I guess that's about all I should say, but thank you very much. You. I appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you. John, come on up. And bring your wife up to you. <laughs> you don't do all those years without it being a family commitment, right? <laughs> Chief? I'm sure... This face right here is very familiar for those that have been to any Madison event for how many years? Since 1971. So that's quite a few years. That's uh, a lot of farmer's markets, a lot of concerts, a lot of parades, a lot of just stepping forward to serve our residents. So it's a great honor to present this proclamation in recognition to uh, present it to Chief John Granado in recognition of his service to Madison Auxiliary Police. Whereas the Madison Auxiliary Police under the supervision of the Chief of Police consists of members who are volunteers that dedicate countless hours to the borough as a source of additional manpower at special events such as parades and festivals, as well as increased traffic and crowd control. And whereas formally install installed in the Madison Auxiliary Police in June 1971, John Granado has been a fixture at Madison's farmer market at every special event held in the bur Mad borough of Madison. And whereas a United States Marine Corps veteran, a lifelong resident of Madison, John and his wife Barbara have three children, John, Joseph, and Patty. And whereas it takes a very special person to volunteer so much of their time to such a worthy cause. And whereas John Granado rose to the rank of chief during his tenure and has proudly served Madison Auxiliary for, and if you haven't done the math yet, 47 years. Now, therefore, I, Robert H. Conley, Mayor of Borough of Madison, on behalf of the governing body, hereby extend thanks and appreciation, and this is not enough, really, to share our appreciation, for your, your efforts, dedication, commitment to the residents of the Borough of Madison. John, thank you so much.
business. Mark Cacavell, please come forward. Any other ambulance corps? There you are. Yes. <laughs> As uh, many of us know that uh, three weeks ago the calendar turned to March, but uh, someone forgot to tell March that, and so we've been dealing with quite a bit of uh, extra storms and snow and quite a challenge. And uh, two weeks ago at the last council meeting we presented this proclamation, uh, but not all the uh, groups that uh, want we wanted to recognize the effort during the storm were available. But we, we are blessed to have a volunteer ambulance corps. And when you volunteer for an ambulance corps, you, you don't get to choose the weather. You know, you can volunteer maybe for May Day and say, well, you know, it's raining, maybe I'm gonna stay home. Uh, we hope you don't do that. But when you volunteer for the ambulance corps, you are out there no matter what. And of course, the calls go up during a storm and your, your crew was ready to answer the call. So uh, I won't read the, all this, but uh, it, obviously we dealt with not only the, the wind and rain from the one storm, and then the uh, following was wind and snow, with nearly 20 inches of snow with major tree damage and cars getting stuck all over. So last paragraph now, Robert H. Hi, Robert H. Conley, Mayor of Borough Madison, on behalf of the governing body, hereby extend thanks and appreciation to the Madison Volunteer Ambulance Corps for their hard work and dedication in keeping the Madison residents of safe during the storm. Thank you very much, and please extend our thanks to the squad. <coughs> I wish that more people from the organization had come with me. Uh, during the storm, we had a number of members that they walked out. They, they made an effort to come down. They understand the importance of making sure that truck is ready to go. Um, in the middle of the storm, members were walking down when they couldn't get cars out. That was their commitment to this town and to you guys. I just want to say thank you to you guys. If it wasn't for you guys donating your time, and money, we wouldn't exist. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Jimmy Matina, I'll introduce you for the last time as acting <laughs> superintendent of the electric department. So um, two weeks ago, we also had things to say about the electric department and wanted to present this proclamation, but of course, you were working, trying to restore the town. So before I get to the, uh, the proclamation, which I won't read because it's uh, pretty much already covered, but a couple of things I do want to share, and one, one email I did share at the last meeting, but, but I do want to read it again. And this came from Mayor Bruce Harris of Chatham. I honestly don't have the words that will properly convey our gratitude for making the arrangements for Madison Electric to restore the power in Chatham. JCPNL is clearly overwhelmed, and as you know, we have hundreds of residents who have been without power for days, and many of the schools are without power. As the length of these outages increases, the patience wears thin and tempers fray, and your generous offer will help our beleaguered residents resume their lives. So this email came uh, that weekend after the storm while they were still out. And most importantly, your offer reflects our century plus tradition of partnership and cooperation and friendship between municipalities that we, will, we continue to value highly. On behalf of myself, the borough council and our residents, thank you very much sincerely, Bruce Harris, mayor. And of course, I had the easy part of work, coordinating along working with Ray, but you went there and I, I think you did see the one handwritten letter from uh, a resident that said she was so happy to see the Madison electric truck out front to restore power to her house and com commented on the professionalism, kindness, and respect that our crews showed, which we, we, we take for granted in Madison and others don't really uh, understand how great it is and what a great crew you are leading. Um, and I do want to take one extra thing, uh, a thank you to slip in here. 
because um, regretfully, as I mentioned two weeks ago, this help was not easy. We, we called up JCP now and said we are, Madison is fully restored and you still have thousands of people out in the neighboring towns and we would love to help you. And they said, we'd love to send your crew to Sussex, Sussex County. And we love Sussex County, but we can't send you halfway across the state and not have you nearby. So it took not only calls, but um, also uh, BPU President Joseph Forlicio and also former uh, Madison mayor, who is now commissioner, BPU commissioner Marianna Holden, uh, really worked hard to uh, tell JCP now Madison is ready to help those in Chatham Borough, Chatham Township, Morris Township, and Berkeley Heights. So please make it happen. We made it happen, and then you really made it happen. So on behalf of the governing body and all the residents of Madison, we commend you for your work, which included during that rain, rain and windy storm, being in that bucket with close to 40 mile an hour winds and not coming down to, until everyone was restored, being out there in the snow, restoring people. And as I also pointed out, it's the stuff you do on a sunny day because not only did we restore people quickly, but as I mentioned before, in every neighboring town, their numbers were in the thousands. Ours was about 250, if I understand. And that is because of the line clearance work we do, the work we do maintaining the lines, replacing utility poles as they age, so that when the storm hits a fan, we are, we, it doesn't make a bad problem. So, Jimmy, please thank you and thank the whole crew for all the work they've done. Okay, reports from committees, health, Mr. Rowe. I do not have a report this evening, Mr. Mayor. Okay, public works and engineering, Ms. Vitali. Thank you, Mayor. Um, first, the uh, report from the engi engineer. Uh, bid openings for the five budgeted projects, including HDM qualifications, the Elmer Street, Plain Street, Greenwood Avenue, and the 2018 road construction, which is Rosewood, Crestwood, Kensington, and Central, will be held on Tuesday and Thursday of this week. Uh, another Northeast storm comprised field construction progress over the week, but there has been some progress on the water main installation on Central Avenue. NJDEP has provided confirmation of grant funding for the Bailey Ellard Amford Field Project in the amount of 409000 through the Hazardous Discharge Site Remediation Fund. This significant grant offsets nearly 75% of site remediation costs associated with the Bailey property improvement. Congratulations to all of this time-consuming but worthwhile effort. Uh, quotes are now are being requested for the Summerhill Trails improvements from local landscape or construction <coughs> vendors. A new trail signage is also part of the county uh, grant award. Um, also, the uh, Utility uh, Study Committee is scheduled to meet um, March 27th at 7 o'clock. So anybody that's interested, you know, you're, you're certainly uh, welcome. Um, I have a report from the Department of Public Works, but uh, there, there isn't too much. You know, I looked at this report and I was thinking, I don't know how they did it all. Um, you know, they cleaned up, uh, they're, they're chipping, they're um, picking up all kinds of debris. And in the meantime, they're, they're still taking care of repairing blo broken plows and fixing chainsaws, um, doing park maintenance, um, and snow removal of all the crosswalks and sidewalks and, and whatever. Um, the, the poor trees in this town have suffered a great deal. But as, as I go down every single day, you start seeing the, the, all of that uh, trimming and, and whatever. Uh, a lot of it is being picked up. So, um, you know, uh, these guys have been absolutely amazing. They didn't sleep for like 30 hours. And yet they decided to come and do their regular work. So. Um, you know, we're very, very proud of all of them. We're real proud of you guys, too, Jimmy. 
um, you, you did a stupendous job. You know, that, it was called Baptism by Fire. <laughs> you know, and you, you got it this year. But, um, you know, you did an excellent job. So thank you very much. That's all me. Thank you. And uh, finance and borough clerk, Ms. Thank Bailey. You. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, in anticipation of the June 5th primary election, the filing deadline for nominee, uh, nomination petitions for municipal office is April 2nd, 2018. The forms are available in the borough clerk's office. Voter registration forms as well as mail-in ballot applications are also available in the borough clerk's office as well as online at morriselections.org. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Thank you. And public safety, Mr. Wolkowitz. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, from the fire department, I have uh, a somewhat unusual report. It's a bit of a story. On Wednesday, March 21st, during the recent snowstorm, the fire department was presented with a very challenging rescue situation. A 12-year-old boy was brought to the firehouse by his mom and dad. The young boy had the outer portion of a bearing from a fidget spinner stuck on his finger. <laughs> his finger was swollen, and it just wouldn't come off. The fire department tried soap, oil, and various other techniques, but his finger was just too swollen and it wouldn't come off. Recently, some members of the fire department took a class entitled Man Versus Machine, which covered many things, one of which was how to deal with this exact situation. After the class, firefighters put together a ring removal kit, just in case the situation would ever arise. They used it for this situation, along with the acquired skills they had learned to safely remove the bearing ring. They utilized a Dremol tool, whatever that is, a custom-made finger protector, a water spray bottle, and a very calming and reassuring attitude. Firefighters gently cut the ring off. The boy's finger was fine, and his parents, needless to say, were very appreciative and thankful. <laughs> so. Uh, for our department, fire department, as I said to the chief, you guys do it all. <laughs> From the police department, on Friday, March 23rd, Patrolman Patrick Strafacci graduated from the DARE America course and was awarded the, the distinction of being the most improved DARE instructor during the training. This week-long course taught officers how to effectively teach the DARE curriculum with classroom instruction and hands-on teaching to active students. Officers from as far away as Alaska participated in the training, and Patrolman Stefacci will be teaching there as a backup instructor for the remainder of the school year. On Saturday, March 24th, as mentioned earlier, but worth repeating, the Madison Police Department provided security for the Madison Morristown March for our lives rallies. Madison motorcycle officers provided an escort to the approximately 13,000 participants in the Morristown March and there were no incidents. And then finally, on March 26, Patrolman Nelson Jimenez <coughs> successfully completed the vigorous field training program with the Madison Police Department. Patrolman Jimenez will be assigned to the patrol division and has been cleared for solo patrol. Congratulations to him. Thank you. Thank you. And community affairs, Ms. Byrne. Well, as you mentioned, I Last Wednesday was the Chase of Madison. Um, it was at Brook Lake Country Club as opposed to our normal digs of the Park Avenue Club. Um, Brook Lake Country Club was really a, a, a good group to work with. Um, we, they never said no, um, which I like. Um, <laughs> Also from the DDC, it's March, but pretty soon it will be May, and when it's May, we have May Day. May Day is coming up. Um, there's opportunities to sponsor the t-shirt um, or other things, um, and it's a great opportunity to get involved as a, as a town member. Um, I, I, there's nothing so strengthening as uh, working on a project and then wa walking around and seeing just what the town of Madison accomplished on May Day. So that's my report. 
Thank you. And utilities, Mr. Hoover. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I do believe that you have given my status report for the electric utility, but <laughs> let me please add, Jimmy, you guys have been fantastic. Seriously. Uh, it's a pleasure knowing you, a pleasure working with you and your team. You continue to follow up on, on everything that's going on in town, trees on wires, all that kind of thing, replenishing your supplies, getting things done, and you continue to work on it without complaint, and just doing it, doing it, doing it, and doing it, not only the quality, the quantity, but the quality of the work. So thank you very much for all of that. You're welcome. Uh, for the Water Department, uh, they're installing radio transmitter, transmitters for remote water meter reading on work orders for outside registers, meter replacements, and new construction meter installations. The annual New Jersey Department DEP compliance evaluation and assistance inspection has taken place. We don't have the results yet, but we will share them with you as we get them. That's it, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, speaking, of, it looks like you've, a family member just stepped out. It, okay. As soon as we're, we're going to move up Resolution 118, but we will uh, we'll wait a few minutes so we can have that the whole proud family here. So we will uh, start with the. Introduction of 20, 2017 budget and tax resolution. Um, so, if, can the uh, clerk, I, or, or, I'm sorry, I call up uh, ordinance 15 2018 for first reading and ask the borough clerk to read said ordinance by title. Ordinance 15 2018 is calendar year 2018 ordinance to exceed the municipal budget appropriations limit and to establish a cap bank. Mayor, I move Ordinance 15-2018. A second. Um, and I'm sure I've mentioned this a little bit a few minutes ago. Jim, you want to just give a quick little what, what this does so people understand? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor. This is a ministerial action that allows the borough to increase the potential amount that can be appropriated within the budget. Um, it gives additional capacity and additional comfort in case there are any issues down the road. It also allows there to be a cap bank. It's statutorily required. The statutory citation is in there. Um, we have not had a need to do this, but it's just a good belts and suspenders to take this action so we have the capacity if or when it was needed. Thank you. Any, for, any council discussion? Roll call vote. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Mr. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Okay, and since the budget introduction has a presentation and all that, we will take a little turn and I will ask for a um, motion for Resolution 118 2018, a resolution of the Borough of Madison appointing James Matina as Electric Utility Superintendent. So moved. Second. Okay. Any council discussion? Roll call vote. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Byrne? <clears throat> yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Now we need that cape. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for your dedication and uh, looking forward to more great things. Okay, congratulations. Yep. Thank you. Right. Okay, will the clerk please read the budget introduction statement? Upon introduction and adoption, the 2018 budget and tax resolution will be published in summary in the Madison Eagle on March 29, 2018, with a public hearing date set for Monday, April the 23rd, 2018, at 8 p.m. in the Council Chambers of the Hartley Dodge Memorial, at which time and place all interested <coughs> individuals will have the opportunity to be heard and there will be consideration for final adoption. A copy of the budget as introduced will be filed with the Madison Public Library and the Mars County Library for public review. I may have a motion for the resolution 104-2018, a resolution of the Borough of Madison adopting the 2018 budget and tax resolution. Mayor, I move resolution 104-2018. I second. Okay, Osprey, do you have sure. lead off the comments? Okay, um, yeah, Jim's gonna put the 
a presentation up on the board and we have individual <coughs> copies. First of all, I'd like to say thank you very much um, to Jim Burnett and, and to uh, our administrator, Cody. They've done a great job with the budget. Jim has spent countless hours um, making sure that we meet our strategic guidelines, that um, we are prudent, that we keep the services. We had a series of hearings, um, which he prepared for each one of them. And today is the official introduction, and then on April 23rd, we move to uh, the uh, official adoption. And our auditors have reviewed this budget, and they will be at the final meeting, but I thought I would uh, give you the, their comments uh, to date. The budget prepared by the borough is a very sound, fiscally responsible budget document. This, document, uh, this budget maintains the high level of service for the residents of the borough of Madison. This budget is approximately $1,735,300 below the appropriation cap and $241,000 below the tax levy cap. There is approximately $1.1 million of cap bank also that has not been um, utilized. There is nothing in this budget that will negatively impact the 2019 or future budgets. So if we could go on to the next slide, uh, it shows you that um, we are proposing um, a tax increase of less than 1%. New construction in town will contribute over $125,000 in additional revenue for the budget. And we've got $6.2 million for capital improvements in critical infrastructure. And we do this as pay as we go, uh, which is extremely important. I and mean, we've got a really good capital improvement plan for the next five years for roads, utilities, and critical infrastructure. The budget, um, as I said, um, is very manageable. I didn't say this part. Uh, the budget includes a very manageable 1% increase in total appropriations. And we can continue to accommodate a $1.5 million dividend to be given back to the electric utility cu customers this year, plus a $150 targeted rebate for income eligible residents. So that's, you know, really terrific. And we maintain our services, and we maintain um, our capital projects. Um, nothing is being taken away to do this. So I think we should all pat ourselves on the back. It's a good budget. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. And Jim, yep. Thank you. So the mayor and council received in their packet the official state budget document. Uh, we tend to... Uh, Use this form, which is a simple one-page document. The state budget document is not a simple form or a simple document. Um, many pages, a little bit difficult to follow, but happy to teach anyone if anybody wants to learn more about this document. Um, council also received, and it should be on the record, that they received a, a user-friendly budget, which is another slightly smaller document with numbers uh, put in a slightly different way. Um, and uh, that's required by state statute to go to the council. Um, from March 5th uh, to this budget, there was just a small $3,000 change, which uh, was generated by uh, the need for a matching portion of the MASA grant that wasn't included in the previous numbers. So uh, that's the only difference that you see there. There were no differences in the water electric utility budgets from what the council um, discussed on March 5th. That's all baked into this document here. Um, we'll be asking you in a few minutes to pass the resolution so Liz and I can get moving and get it down to the state and introduced. And as Mayor Conley explained, the document then sits out there in the public uh, for 28 days. People can see it uh, at the clerk's office. They can see it online. If they have any questions, they can come in. That's the opportunity for the public to, to be aware of what the document is, and there'll be a hearing um, in April. I did want to take a few minutes to talk about um, how property taxes work. There was um, a, a local editorial in the paper, and I just wanted to kind of cover a little bit about that so people understand a little bit more about how property taxes work, but I'll be quick. Um, first, I wanted to explain the impact of new construction. If this looks familiar, it's a, from a presentation I gave last year talking about a little fictitious town called Conleyville um, that had uh, four houses and an empty lot, uh, $45 in property taxes in 2016, and this gives you kind of the information there. And then in uh, 2017, uh, a house was built on that lot. 
So you can see that uh, the assessed value of that lot went from $50,000 to $100,000 after the house was built on it. Um, taxes went up from $45 to $50 in, in Conleyville. And um, the, uh, so that gives you kind of a little small illustrative example of how taxes work. Uh, but more importantly, the impact of new construction. So the question is, did taxes collected in Conleyville go up in 2017? And the answer is yes. They went from 45 to $50. <laughs> question two, did taxes on the houses number one through four go up in 2017? No, they didn't. They stayed the same. All of the tax increase was paid by that house that was built and the increase in property taxes on that lot. So the short conclusion is that construction, if done thoughtfully, home improvements, um, new rateables are all a great way to help maintain uh, uh, or low, even lower existing property taxes. The next thing I want to talk about is how the actual taxes work, how the calculation works. And uh, we have to do a little arithmetic or calculus here, I apologize. But it, the tax rate is calculated by the amount to be raised by taxation divided by total of all rateables in town, which is over $3 billion, um, divided by 100. So using the Conleyville example, the amount to, to be raised by taxes was 50. The rateable base was 500000 because each house was worth $100,000. What's the tax rate in Conleyville? It's a one cent. So 50 divided, there's the math right there review, but there's the math right there. So uh, the town of Madison is no different. It's just the numbers are more complex. What I want to show is that this is the certified tax rate that comes from the county. We don't get it certified until August. We get, teas, we, we get the numbers in July in a slightly different format, and that allows us to get the bills out, um, the third quarter um, property tax bills out, because they include the new rate. The first two quarters include last year's rate. The next two quarters include um, the, the new rate. And why is there such a delay in that? Because um, uh, we have to wait for the Board of Education, who hasn't even introduced their budget, and the county, who has introduced but hasn't passed their budget. <coughs> so uh, the math is the same in terms of creating that tax rate. I, I zoomed in here a little bit. And here, here is our, our rateable base, $3.5 billion. Um, and you can see that's in the math here. And then the municipal uh, portion of the tax is uh, last year was 13 million, 112, and there's the math there, and that comes to 0 0.33735135. It does get rounded um, on the tax bill down here. So that gives you just how the taxes are calculated, the timing, and um, the purpose. I'm not going to get into, but if anybody's really into it, I will uh, explain offline how the county tax works. In short, every year the county has to look at every municipality on an equalized basis. If Randolph has not had their um, appraisals um, updated since 19, their, their um, uh, the appraisals and tax, taxable, tax rateables updated since 1980, and ours were done in 2014, it's apples and oranges. So the, ca the county takes our rateable base, takes Randolph's, and equalizes them to divvy it up. And, um, and so, uh, I'm happy to explain that in more detail if anybody's ever interested. As mentioned, I can't give the council the entire 2000 tax rate because the Board of Education hasn't introduced. State aid figures also don't come out. They came out just a couple weeks ago. They were confirmed to be what we had thought, which was the same as last year, a little over $808,000. Um, during this budget process, we assumed that, and it was correct. So this here shows you the tax rates for 2017 and 18 when you add in the library. And um, the difference between the two tax rates uh, went up by 0.99%. If that number sounds familiar, it's because presto, we've been talking about that all along. Here's the point. I know it's a little number here, but here's the 0.99% uh, increase or about 1% increase that Osri just referenced on existing properties. So we kind of talk about it. We don't talk about your tax rates 4.1147 versus 4.5523 because... I don't think those numbers process as easily as your taxes are going to go up by about 1%. So that's the way we present it here. Those are the challenges with the tax rate and uh, presenting it. Um, but I did want to give it to you this evening and explain that to you. So with that, if there's any questions on the budget, I'll entertain them now. Hopefully not. Any questions for Jim? And a reminder that also besides the documents that Jim outlined that will be 
posted and at the library and so on, all the documents that we presented through the whole development of uh, the budget going back to even last year as we started the capital all, are all on Rosenet. And so you can please take a look at it, and um, especially this latest presentation. So when someone says, tell me about uh, what does it mean when a new house gets built, what happens? You can, you can be the expert. And just for the record, as I talk to my sisters, we were talking about Conley Town this morning because we used to play Conley, Conley Town growing up. But that's enough. <laughs> Any other comments from the uh, council? Okay, roll call vote, please. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Okay, um, next communications and petitions. Unreceived, Mayor. All right, now we're on to our first of two invitations for discussion. This is one is limited to uh, items on our agenda discussions, which includes a presentation from the Environment Commission, Environmental Commission and also a discussion on borough master plan process, the update on that. Uh, also, you may comment on any of the resolutions, and I will go through those now just so you will understand as we get to the uh, consent agenda. So the consent agenda resolutions, the self-examination of budget resolutions, 105, 106, resolution ratifying the award of a purchase order contract for a um, Workstar truck hook and lift. And this is through a uh, national uh, purchase, and this is for DPW, resolution 107, authorizing execution of a settlement and uh, release police disciplinary matter. Uh, 108 is authorizing developers agreement between uh, Borough of Madison and 34 Walnut Street. Uh, 109 is um, confirming payment number one and change orders one and two for Joe Med contracting for Central Avenue Water Main Replacement Project. Resolution 110 is resolution Borough approving appointments, uh, office emergency management. We had done those appointments, but uh, the county, in order to get FEMA reimbursement, says it has to be backed by resolution. The uh, resolution 111, awarding contract for purchase of 40 Vista two-piece body cameras uh, under state contract for amount of $49,000. Resolution uh, 112, uh, ratifying the appointment of Patrick Heffernan as intern finance department Resolution 113, ratifying appointments of interns Haley Budminski and Megan Budminski and uh, David Vaccarello. Summer intern positions. Uh, resolution 114 is approving temporary signs for AAUW, Association, American Association of University of Women. Uh, resolution 115 is awarding three-year contract to a American Electrical Testing. Uh, and maintenance of Kings Road and James Park substation. That is a routine uh, maintenance thing. So that's $127,000. Uh, 116 is um, rescinding resolution 188, ratifying the award of uh, contract to Jimmy Connor Connors LLC for Civic Center. And um, then resolution 117 is a raffle for the high school PT. PTSO, and resolution 118 was the appointment which we already passed of uh, James Matina as our electric superintendent. So if you want to comment on any of those resolutions or the agenda items, please step forward, state your name, your address, and the agenda item you were commenting on. Anyone wish to comment? Please step forward. Seeing none, I close this part of the meeting, and we move on to our presentation. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody, we have um, create. I have a whole box of material that we've created, but I thought you might like at least just a small sample. Um, so Renee has been nice enough to hand that out. Um, I'm Claire Whitcomb, and this is about the Madison Environmental Commission. And I really want to thank Carmela Vitali, our amazing liaison, and before her, Pat was our liaison. And it's been a pleasure to get to know the town, to work more closely with Jim. 
and we're actually having a really good time right now. So creating community through sustainability. Um, I'm starting here because in the six years I've been on the commission, I've seen people come to meetings, come up to us at Bottle Hill Day. They say, I've looked at the Sustainable Madison website. You, you know, I really care about the environment. What can I do? Well, we haven't had a whole lot of answers. I mean, they, they've, they've kind of come and they've kind of gone. So um, this, this presentation will hopefully show you some answers. And the obvious answer is join the Environmental Commission. So uh, we, we still have one alternate slot open, if anybody here would like to join. And um, I was knocked out when the Shade Tree gave their presentation. They said that people had served on the <laughs> Shade Tree Commission for 27 years. Most of us on the Environmental Commission are joined within the last two years. So I thought I'd take a moment to tell you who we are. We're, Two MBAs, two master gardeners, two teachers, one journalist, and one former mayor. And um, over here, can you guys please stand up? <laughs> we have Trina Malik, Phil McCary, Renee Shaloub, and um, there are some of those things, so you should ask them which ones they are. <laughs> uh, collectively, we have a lot of skills. We're uh, good at everything from climate strategy to beekeeping. And two of us have worked professionally with Jane Goodall. Um, so how do you create community through sustainability? And this is, I'm going to back you up to 2017. And Trina came in and said, I, we should have a green forum and we should have 100 people there. And we had 60, so I think that was pretty excellent. And it was, uh, well, we planned it with the help of a Drew intern named Brooke Winters, and we decided to keep it local. We could have had a lot of act, out, experts come in. But uh, here we have, OK, that's Frank Curran from Greenhouse Solar. That's Natalie from Seal Power. And it was really fun to go back through these slides because I found people. Like there's Joan. Uh, this is the native plants. We had three groups, three breakout groups. One was on reducing energy. This is. Uh, native plants and pollinators. And Judy Honahan was our expert, and Ellen Cranefist. This happens to be my daughter, but that's not relevant. Um, <laughs> and this was the reducing trash. And this is uh, Ken O'Brien, who uh, really had people riveted, especially with his story of where all the paper goes into Markel's straw straws, I believe. I um, did composting. Um, and as we all know, that. Uh, well, maybe we don't, but compost is like a major contributor to methane gas in, in landfills. So it's, it's kind of low-hanging fruit, pardon the pun, um, for getting, uh, reducing our impact. Um, and I wanted to point out these signs because uh, we worked with Project Aware, and they made these signs. And um, I was walking home one night, and I saw that the bike store had all these really large bike boxes outside. <coughs> Ellen Cranefist got a hold of them. They cut the, their bike boxes to size, and these are the posters that you'll see at many of our events. We carry them everywhere. Mm. Um, so we got a logo, and we created a lot of materials. And this is the wildlife one. All right, so one of our things was on saving energy. And um, we're proud to be working with Seal Power. They came in through the Green Fair we had a couple years ago, and uh, Jim says they're coming back to make a presentation in April to all of you about their successes. Um, this is just a few things. There, we had 50% uh, higher response in Madison than, than other towns, and I think it's partly because we got a lot of press out, and we had one excellent video from uh, <laughs> a local celebrity who made, made the really good point that um, these, these energy audits enhance the value of your home. And I think that's the missing link. It's not just um, for you. It's, it really helps in resale, and it takes a good re realtor to make that point. So this is a working document. It's, it's a placeholder. We're doing a campaign on um, reducing peak demand in the summer. This was a special request from Jim Burnett, and we, f we feel really strongly about it. So um, O'Neill Van Horn, who's a um, 
PhD student at Drew worked on this with his sister who works at a nonprofit. So we're going to um, get it to, to the right place. But um, if we can help reduce uh, the town's demand on the five key, key um, hours that set our rates, we can help us all. Uh, reducing waste. Okay. So the big one is the town swap, and I gather that the mayor is cleaning out his closets, and I hope everybody else is. And so we're going to have some articles coming out in the paper on this, and Renee's going to do a bunch of social media. Uh, this is the composter drive we had in the fall. This is um, a small amount of the composters that appeared in my yard. We had we. I'm pointing this out as an indicator for things that we didn't expect. We've never sold more than 16 composters on a really banner year. 54 is a lot of composters. Um, and it was like Halloween. People just came out of the woodwork all day long to pick up their composters. And, and yeah, I didn't realize I was going to have to teach everybody how to compost and save leaves. And Renee fortunately came along and, with her camera. The good news is we're having another another composter drive, and we're going to try and link it up with May Day. We've been in touch with Lisa Ellis, and we have, as a result of our outreach, an all-volunteer crew that are going to run it, have it in their yard, and um, oh, and we're going to do rain barrels as well because there were requests for that. So we um, worked with Suburban Shoe Shop to make them a um, they agreed to take shoes year round. And um, Reverend Dunn on the left is picking them up from the Baptist Church. I did this for, for too many years. And uh, you get 50 cents a pound from the recycler, and you get nothing if they're like all worn. But he, he's game for collecting everything because they use the worn ones and they chop them up for insulation. So I really admire that, and it's great. Uh, it's a win-win because um, Suburban Shoes really appreciates the foot traffic. They're up against Zappos, and it's great to see sustainability give a business edge to a, a local shop. All right, native pollinators, native plants and pollinators. Um, this is the Madison Recreation Commission's, uh, sorry, Cent Center's uh, pollinator meadow, and I'm not going to really go into all the projects that are going on there because, first of all, I don't know what they are. Stephen Stocker is um, his own force of nature, and it would take the whole presentation to tell you. But you should go down there and check this out. And um, one of the great things is uh, Joan McCary was over there, joined the Environmental Commission. We started talking about milkweed, at, and you, as Many of you know uh, the monarch butterfly lays its eggs only on milkweed. And there's um, been 16 million butterflies lost in the last year, according to the World Wildlife Fund. And so milkweed is, for monarchs, a critical part of their habitat. And the suburbs used to have all these meadows and like vacant lots and, and places where birds and insects flourished, and as we've become more manicured, these places are going away. So we mentioned milkweed, and Joan said, I'll plant them. And Stephen said, I have land, and I have milkweed seeds. So she's got 70 that have come through the winter, I believe. And oh, this is just how much the monarchs like milkweed. And then the Pinelands Nursery offered flats of milkweed to environmental commissions, and we signed up. So we, we're going to have about 100 milkweed plants to give away. We're going to give away at the Green Fair at the library on April 21st, and we're also hoping to do it at May Day um, at our table for the composter drive. Um, growing a green community. So if you want volunteers, you have to get out there. And we did. We um, did a screening of the Great Swamp, Saving the Great Swamp, at the <coughs> Chase Room of the Library from 2 to 4, Saturday, March 10th. And um, I don't know if you would have a running a guess as to how many people you would show up, think would show up to this kind of event. Well, it was standing room only. Um, there were 60 people. And uh, this is uh, Carl Fenske on the left, who is the son of Helen Fenske, who organized 
the resistance. And this is the film's director who had a lot to say about making a documentary. These are some very interesting audience members who happen to be related to Trina. Um, so who came? They were uh, not young, and they were the usual suspects. But, and Joan talked to them at the end to see if they wanted to sign up, and nobody was signing up because they're all doing things. It's a very engaged community, and, and I think for every person we didn't reach, there were probably 10, who didn't show up, there were probably 10 or 20 who were like, interested, it was on their radar. People are interested and they're out there. So this is gonna tap a different audience. This is the Green Vision Forum that I hope you will all come to and I, we'd be really, really grateful if you did. Um, we were sort of challenged to, to do an outreach and uh, Drew University offered to host it and uh, the idea came up why not reach out to the youth? So we have, Re Renee has organized it, and we have teams coming from um, all the elementary schools except for Tory J because it's curriculum night. We have two teams from the Madison Junior School. We have a team from the high school, from Drew, and from FDU. And they're giving two minute presentations on their vision for a greener Madison. And we're so pleased that so many, Carmela has, um, asked a lot of people from the town to come, and we feel that this is a really great way, just the way we did this weekend, to, to listen to the kids, see what, what they're thinking about. They have ideas for bike swaps and water conservation, and that we can uh, come together as a community and, and just see what, what the future might look like for all of us. So I'm... Um, we think a lot about, like, it's a scary world out there. The ice caps are melting. Um, they want to drill in the oceans. Uh, so these are some things that we were putting on here as total food for thought as for the absolute future with no time frame. But what would a greener Madison look like in two, five, and ten years? And how do we get to that kind of a discussion? Um, so... Renewable energy leadership. Our utility puts us in a unique position to purchase and generate fossil fuel-free electricity. The governor has some guidelines for this. Environmental groups have different guidelines. What would this look for, like for us? Energy efficiency in our homes and businesses. Reduce trash costs. Right now we have, a, um, basically Jim describes it as a pay, all you can eat tra trash menu. And the if you go to pay as you throw, and I'm not saying we can or would know how to do that, but pay as you throw means that if you only have a little bit, which I do, you pay a little bit. If your neighbors throw out sofas, they pay more. Um, it's, it's a plan that, that Sustainable Jersey has guidelines and, and grants for, for getting to. Um, more composting, curbside pickup is not really um, pie in the sky. T towns like Lambertville and Prince have explored that with pilot programs. Uh, native plants and far less pesticides as a norm. One of the, the, the complicating things about planting milkweed is that if you're using a lot of pesticides, you're still not going to get butterflies. It, it's, it's, it's two hands. And then finally, feeling proud that we are part of a sustainable town. So, thank you. Thank you for a great presentation. Thank you. You should be very proud of all the work that's been done. Thank you, Claire. Any questions, comments? All right, and just so um, the um, April 19th, yeah, so that, that date has been advertised, will, or will be advertised by the council, we will have a quorum there. No formal action will be uh, taken by the council, but it gives us a chance to uh, be, be present and um, not just keep our mouths shut. So but no formal action will be taken again. Um, next item, borough master plan, Osprey. Okay, um, we periodically, um, well, our, our last master plan was 1999. That was a long time ago. 
and lots of things have changed and lots of changes will continue to take place, then we're required by the state to do periodic reexaminations, which we've done, and we've had additional elements when we did the open space. We added that to the master plan. And we just kept piecing and patching things together. And so we spoke, uh, the planning board spoke with our planner. And we thought uh, uh, more efficient, uh, it was time to do a complete master plan overhaul. <coughs> We have challenges. The town is 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 you know quite developed, but there's still pockets for development, and we want the public to have input. Uh, we want the council to have input um, and the planning board, and to see where we want to go and are there land use changes we want to make. And the process would take approximately um, 18 months. The actual writing. We're suggesting that the cost be done um, over three budget cycles. Uh, the Susan Blickstein will put together a plan and a proposal that will then come back to this council uh, for approval. But I just wanted to give you a heads up. That's what we would, l we would like the council's support on that. Any questions or comments? Uh, excuse me. Uh, when, when do you think this might start? Well, um, I think we're going to start sooner rather than later because uh, she'll, I think we'll have the proposal this coming month. So hopefully by the next council meeting, we'll have an actual proposal in front of us that we can approve with a, a dollar amount. And then um, there's a subcommittee of the planning board that's actually been working um, on bits and pieces of, of the master plan to revise um, you know, some of the things that You'll be passing our, you know, you're, you have tonight before you are planning board um, recommendations. So the, the subcommittee would guide it. There'd have to be a series of town hall meetings. That's a requirement. There's certain re statutory requirements to putting together a, a master plan. So I would like to think that it's going to start this spring. Good. That's great. I, I, I'm totally supportive of it. Okay, I'd rather have it start sooner rather than later. You know, we've got a lot of things going on, like the economic revitalization of downtown and a lot of other things. So I think all of these folded in, plus the, the uh, involvement of the, uh, the, the citizens of Madison, I think is great. So the sooner the better, as far as I'm concerned. Great. Pat? Um, the agenda, Rick, we got said they're estimating the cost at about 120000 so you'd spread that over three years. Um, how did they come up with that number? Is that what we paid the last time? Is that something yeah, it's not, comparable uh, it's, town? Yeah, it's, it's, it's based on what's the going rate is right now for, I mean, she's just done some master plan um, for other towns, and she, this is a number she threw out to us as, an, as what it would probably be. Is this just one person doing the work? No. Um, we're going to ask for um, uh, uh, Kate Hinson. How, what? Clark Kate and Hintz. Clark, Hint, Clark Kate and Hintz um, to help us with um, some aspects of it. Thank you. And that would all be defined and, and <clears throat> spelled out. They'll give us an actual proposal to break yes. down the cost. Okay. Correct. I just thought that it would be helpful for you to know approximately that this it is. It was kind of a big number. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Carmela? Yeah, I, I just want to make one comment. Um, I sat on the planning board the last time that they did this. Mm -hmm. it, it's a very, very interesting project to go line by line it's a very difficult project but uh, over the over the last couple of years what I have found what this particular council has worked on is like bringing us into the 21st century in a lot of respects and I think that this is like the last element that has to be done at this point is uh, because the town has changed so dramatically in, in a lot of uh, a lot of ways. Uh, the requests are, are very different than they were in 1999. So, uh, you know, I, I think that this is probably one of the best things that can happen right now. So I full support of it, no matter what it costs. And I'll get in trouble for saying that. Because <laughs> I got in trouble once for saying that. We'll keep but it with no it. No matter what it costs at a reasonable price. Yes. <laughs> no matter what the cost. There are some things that you just got to pay for and get it done. Well, it is, it is the plan that guides us into the future. 
and it's time. I mean, we need to reevaluate and make sure we have everybody's thought processes in front of us um, as we you know, go ahead. And as you pointed out, it's been also reinforced that it's a community-wide effort, so we'll yeah. be getting the input. Right. So uh, next step is we'll have the proposals put together, and so we'll have the, the actual, not at any cost price, <laughs> but the <laughs> um, cost, and then we'll have our CFO also talk about sources for funding. Okay, so... Excellent, and uh, more to come. Moving on to ordinance for hearing, will the clerk please read the statement? The ordinance is scheduled for hearing. We're introduced by title and passed on the first reading at the regular meeting of the council held on Monday, March 12th, 2018. All were posted and filed according to law, and copies were made available to the general public requesting steam. I call up ordinances for second reading. Ask the clerk to read said ordinances by title. Ordinance 12 2018. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison amending Chapter 195 of the Madison Borough Code entitled Land Development to clarify and provide necessary amendments to conform to the municipal land use law. I open the hearing for Ordinance 12. Anyone wishing to comment, please step forward. Seeing none, I close the hearing. Mayor, I move Ordinance 12 2018. I'm second. Any council discussion? Roll call vote. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Byrne? <clears throat> yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. I declare Ordinance 12-2018 adopted and finally passed. I ask the clerk to publish notice of every newspaper and file the ordinance in accordance with the law. Ordinance 13-2018. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison amending Chapter 195 of the Borough Code entitled Land Development to clarify and provide necessary amendments to conform to the municipal land use law. I open the hearing for Ordinance 13. Anyone wish to comment, please step forward. Seeing none, I close the hearing. Mayor, I move Ordinance 13-2018. I'll second. Any council discussion? Roll call vote. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. I declare Ordinance 13-2018 adopted and finally passed. And ask the clerk to publish notice that they are of a newspaper and follow the ordinance in accordance with the law. Ordinance 14 2018. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $600,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for the Hartley Dodge Memorial Plaza site work improvements and related work. I open the hearing for Ordinance 14 2018. Anyone wishing to comment, please step forward. Seeing none, I close the hearing. Mayor, I move Ordinance 14-2018. Second. Any council discussion? Roll call vote. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Jeez. Maureen raised her hand. Oh, oh sorry. I'm sorry. Maureen raised her Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, as somebody who's having a great difficulty walking these days, <laughs> um, this, this project is overdue. I mean, I don't walk um, the plaza or up the stairs any longer because I'm terrified of falling over or tripping. So, yeah, let's get this done. Yes, mm. thank you for reinforcing that. Any other discussion? Roll call vote. Thank you for that. <laughs> Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Byrne. Ms. Ms. Byrne? Yes, Byrne. <laughs> it was my <by> name. <laughs> okay. I uh, declare Ordinance 14 2018 adopted and finally passed, and I ask the clerk to publish notice of her newspaper and file the ordinance in accordance with the law. And now we're on to our second for inv invitation for discussion. This is May. This is when you may comment on anything. Again, try to keep your comments to three minutes or less. I will give you a one-minute grace period and shut you off at four minutes, though. Anyone wishing to comment, please step forward, state your name, your address, and write the same on the clipboard. Seeing none, I close this part of the meeting, and we move on to introduction ordinances. Will the clerk please read the statement? <coughs> this is scheduled for first reading. Have a hearing date set for April the 9th, 2018. All will be published in the Madison Eagle, posted on the bulletin board, and made available to members of the public requesting copies. I call up ordinances for first reading and ask the borough clerk to read said ordinances by title. 
Ordinance 16, 2018, Ordinance of the Borough of Madison, amending Chapter 15 of the Bur Madison Borough Code, entitled Downtown Development Commission. I move that I move Ordinance 16 2018. I second it. Any council discussion? Roll call vote. This is Vitaly. Yes. Ms. Bailey. Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz. Yes. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Burns? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ordinance 17-2018. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison amending Chapter 25 of the Madison Borough Code entitled Open Space Recreation and Historic Preservation Advisory Committee. Mayor, I move Ordinance 17-2018. And I'll second. Any discussion? Any discussion? Pat? Um, one question. I think... If I read this correctly, we're expanding it by four members, one from the Shade Tree Commission and then three additional? No, 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 no. Mm. I don't know why that was there, the way that was. I'll, I can explain. Um, there were four um, other residents, but to keep the um, total at 10, if we're making one a Shade Tree member, we have to reduce the four residents three. to three. So oh. Still the, the 10 members. Oh, okay. Now I understand. So it's One so you're not adding three members. You're taking the general public from four down to three. Yes. Right. Okay. There's seven designated categories and three at large okay. residents. Thank you for the explanation. Okay. I didn't. I didn't. Yeah, the way you read it, it looked like it, we were adding four. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's. No. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments? <clears throat> Roll call vote. Mrs. Vitali. Yes. Ms. Bailey. Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz. Yes. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ordinance 18-2018. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $680,000 from the Water Utility Capital Improvement Fund for the 2018 Water Utility Program Improvements. Mr. Mayor, I move Ordinance 18-2018. Second. Any council discussion? Roll call vote. Mrs. Vitali? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Row. Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Okay. Ordinance 19-2018. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $260,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for the 2018 Sanitary Sewer, Sanitary Sewer Improvements Program. Mayor, I move Ordinance 19-2018. Second. Any council discussion? Roll call vote. Mrs. Vitali? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ordinance 20 2018. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $20,000 from the Municipal Open Space Trust Fund for a welcome center at the James Library oh. Building. Oh, Mayor, I move Ordinance 20 2018. A second. Council discussion. Roll call vote. Mrs. Vitali? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ordinance 21 2018. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $66,000 from the Municipal Open Space Trust Fund for exterior renovations and restoration of the James Library Building. Mayor, I move Ordinance 21 2018. A second. Any council discussion? <coughs> Roll call vote. Mrs. Vitali? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ordinance 22 2018. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison amending Chapter 190 of the Madison Borough Code entitled Water to Update the Water <coughs> Connection Fee Schedule. Mayor, I move Ordinance 22 2018. Second. Any council discussion? Roll call vote. Mrs. Vitali? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ordinance 23-2018. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison amending Chapter 155 of the Madison Borough Code entitled Sewer to update the sewer connection fee schedule. Mayor, I move Ordinance 23-2018. Second. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Mrs. Vitali? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. All right. Uh, consent agenda resolutions. Will the clerk please read the statement? 
consent agenda resolutions will be enacted with a single motion. Any resolution requiring expenditure is supported by a certification of availability of funds. Any resolution requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All resolutions will be reflected in full in the minutes. Mr. Mayor, I move resolutions R105 through R117-2018. I'll second. Any discussion or any that need to be pulled? Roll call vote. Mrs. Vitali? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. There is no unfinished business. Approval of vouchers. Okay, in the current fund, $3,723,441.19. The general capital fund, $194,000. $930.15. Electric Operating Fund, $1,314,271.95. The Water Operating Fund, $26,403.85. And in the Trust, $10,991.75. The total is $5,270,038.89. Mr. Mayor, move the vouchers. I'll second. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Mrs. Vitali? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. The new business would like to make the following appointments. Requesting count, council conf, confirmation. Whippany River Watershed Action Committee. John Hoover, Council Liaison through December 31st, 2018. Municipal Audit Committee. Dave Luber for an unexpired three-year term through December 31st, 2018. Mr. Mayor, move those appointments. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Mayor, I move that we adjourn. We have a second and all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you all. Yeah, I, I think the wording is just not Yes. No, I mean, it is. Like, I, 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 I know that. Code, it'll say four. No. In the morning? Um, yes. Hi.